Harp playing is all in the hand. And that means I have to take very special care of one part of my hands. Hint, it's not calluses. I mean, I do get calluses, but that's not what this video is about. I was nine years old when I had my very first harp lesson, and I was just at the age when I was starting to really pay attention to my fingernails. You know, grow them long, paint them green, dream about scratching the eyes out of all the annoying boys in my class. I went for my first harp lesson at this old riverside house full of harps, and I met my harp teacher, who was this 80-year-old petite harp professor. She took one look at these long neon green nails and said, you're going to have to cut those. And I went, but I don't want to cut them. And she laid a bony hand on my shoulder and marched me into her dining room where there was a beautiful oil portrait of the wall of a Miss America contestant with her hands posed beautifully in front of her and short fingernails. And my teacher pointed at this and said, my daughter was in the Miss America pageant and played harp for her talent. And if she can be in Miss America with short fingernails, you can cut yours. I realized at that moment that my beauty standards were not going to be the same as everybody else's. And I cut my nails and I've never looked back. I play pedal or classical harp and lever or folk harp. And both of these have soft nylon or gut strings that need you to play with the pad of your finger to get that nice, rich, warm sound. Which means that I need to keep my nail shorter than the end of my finger. If you play with your nail, it creates a sort of bzzz, buzzy sound. It's not great. Except for some modern techniques that call for actually using the nail to get a sharp twangy sound. So where is the balance? Now in other parts of the world, there are other kinds of harps that people play exclusively with their nails. But that's a different video. Your typical harp nail routine starts by looking down at your fingers and realizing, oh no, almost a centimeter and a half, unacceptable. So then you assemble all of your tools, your clippers, your file, your cuticle sticks, and jump right in with the clippers because you have to leave for a performance in 30 minutes and you really should have done this yesterday. File down any rough edges and notice that spot on your hand where you cut yourself in the kitchen yesterday and ponder the metaphysical question on whether someone who makes their living with their hands really ought to be allowed near sharp instruments and hot liquids. Push back your cuticles because my hobbies include cuticle care, Apply some lovely cuticle oil to keep them soft in winter, then rush to the bathroom and wash it off because you can't actually get oil on harp strings. Jump in the car and notice there was one spot that you missed, but never fear, you have your trusty travel kit with you. So I cut my nails about every four or five days, and this is my favorite pair of nail clippers. But because redundancy is my friend, I also have a little kit that I carry with me at all times. Seriously, I think I have maybe a dozen sets of nail clippers. Upstairs, purse, car, gig bag. Yeah, literally a dozen sets of nail clippers. Then comes the big question, polish. Actually, I don't use any polish. Personal preference, but I keep my nails so short and I have to redo them so often, I just can't keep polish looking good. And I never liked dark spots on the ends of my fingers when I was playing harp. I know some harpists who use color, but most of the ones I talk to keep either natural colors or no polish at all. Instead, I prefer to buff my nail because that gives me that glossy shine without ever have to worry about chips. And then I keep the color for my toes. And no, no Tarantino foot shots here. But nail care isn't the only thing to keep your hands healthy. If you want to see some equipment moving techniques to save your fingers, click this video right over here. Actually, hope I didn't just make a mess.